Hello, friends. I just had the opportunity to be interviewed by Carolyn Freeman, president of Impact Coaching Ministries. And we had such a good conversation that I asked Carolyn if she would mind if I shared our conversation with you this week on your hope-filled perspective. I'd like to shake things up a little bit now and then. Sometimes I do interviews of other people. Sometimes people interview me. Sometimes it's a solo episode. But this conversation was different because we really talked about the state of where we are right now and what we need to do going forward. So I hope that you'll enjoy, enjoy this conversation and that you will then take the time to go follow Carolyn Freeman and her Impact Coaching Ministries. She works with clients all the time and helps them make maximum impact in their life, in the world in which we live. But Carolyn and I both come at this from a perspective that if it's not biblically based, perspective, we're not interested. We want to share the truth coming straight from the word of God. And she wants people to reach maximum impact in their effectiveness serving the Lord. So I hope you'll enjoy this conversation. Then take the time to go seek out my friend. I am so excited today. I have Dr. Michelle Bankston. Did I say it right? Bankston? Uh, Thanks. I, I, but, I butcher her name every time I spell Everybody it. Everybody does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I cannot tell you what a honor it is to be with her, but also that you are in for a ride. Uh, she is a joy-filled uh, believer. She knows who she is in Christ. She is a neuropsychologist, right? Okay. I always butcher that too, uh, but... Uh, Dr. Michelle and I go back to, I think, February of this year uh, when I was in Georgia and uh, I was do watching her podcast. Uh, somebody mentioned this, uh, her and I just went on and I watched and I thought, whoa, whoa, this lady knows who she is in Christ. I have never missed a podcast since then. I've listened sometimes two, three, and it, as much as four times. Uh, Normally speaking, those of us who are professional uh, have been trained to dumb down the Christian kind of side of it. This lady knows who she is in Christ, and she walks it out in a way that makes me want to follow even more closely the living Christ in me. So uh, I, I just want to tell you a few things about Dr. Michelle. And if I get it wrong, Dr. Michelle, please jump in. Uh, because after my stroke, it's hard sometimes to be able to see. But it, am I? Do I have it right that you have uh, written? Is it eight books now with this one that's fixing to come out? This next one is the seventh, and I'm seventh. working on the eighth now. That's why you oh, okay. see. I've got into your head already. <laughs> uh, what the one that really got me was. Uh, uh, what was it, Dr. Michelle, when, because you sent it to me, the, uh, I can't uh, read my life. The hem of his garment, reaching out to God garment. when pain overwhelms. Yes. I had no clue when uh, I got that book, how the spirit of God was going before me and preparing the way. When I met Dr. Michelle in February, of course, we, none of us have a clue that in June of that year, I would suffer a ma massive stroke that almost took me out. It kept me in the hospital for uh, a week. I am still walking out uh, the trauma of what's happened in my brain. So Dr. Michelle is, has been is such a encouragement. She's walked with me uh, as I've gone through it. So uh, I must say she's been my mentor, my guide, my friend, uh, you name it. And she's been that, I know, without a doubt. She was sent by the Spirit of God. So uh, Dr. Michelle, with her books, she has a podcast of her own. Uh, she has been, uh, is it 30 years now, Dr. Michelle? Okay. Uh, as a neuropsychologist, uh, she lives in Dallas, Texas. She actually lived close to me. I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I would have loved to have gotten to see her here, uh, but she up and 
went, flew the coop and went to Dallas, Fort Worth before I could get there. We were hoping to be able to fly to Dallas to do this, but because of some stuff that's gone on, we're doing it from her house and my house, Dr. Michelle. It is an honor, a great joy, a delight to have you on the podcast today. I just love you. I'll tell you right, all my audience, they've got to listen to your podcast. You have such a wisdom and a variety of things that are, it's, it's just major. So anything that you'd like to share with my audience before I jump in and start questioning, putting questions out there for you. Yeah, Carolyn, you know, I think it's just incredible. I don't know why it surprises me. It shouldn't. I've been a believer for 50 years, but I think it's incredible how God knows our needs long before we do. And he already knows how he's going to meet them. Just you and I intersecting and you finding out about me before your stroke. I I don't take any credit for that. You don't take any credit for that. That's just an example of how good our God is. And that's what gives us hope in the hard times is trusting that he's already got it figured out. This did not take him by surprise when you had your stroke and it was life threatening and that was hard on you, but isn't it great to know that it didn't take God by surprise. No. Everything I've gone through in my life, it never took God by surprise. So I just want to encourage your listeners that whatever you're going through right now, there's hope because it doesn't take God by surprise. And he already knows how he's going to get you through it. Absolutely. Dr. Michelle Hawks loud to me because uh, she is present tense suffering through her own uh, stuff as we would call it uh, she shares it clearly uh, I love the way she uh, puts out uh, for those of us who are on her um, fight uh, at the hard hat uh, at first, I didn't know what that meant because she uh, shared that with us. But Dr. Michelle, when I looked at that, tell the audience, uh, when the hard hat appears, what that means. So I deal with severe, severe debilitating chronic pain. And, you know, people will say, you look great. Yeah. But those who are going through pain, whether it's physical, emotional, relational financial, spiritual pain, grief or loss, all the types of pain that I've talked about in the hem of his garment. A lot of us will put on a smile and just push through. Yeah. It's either that or we curl up in a ball and pull the covers over our head. Well, what good does that do anybody? But uh, it was probably five, six years ago, a friend said, Michelle, you need to get a hard hat. I said, excuse me? He said, yeah, you need to get a hard hat. You know, like the kind construction workers wear. I'm like, Terry, why would I get a hard hat? He said, because when that pain is so debilitating that you're thinking you can't make it one more minute and maybe the pain is so great, you don't even know what to pray. You post a picture of that hard hat and those of us who know and love you will circle around you and help you build the prayer wall of faith. And so when you see the hard hat on Facebook, it means I'm in a bad spot and I need prayer support. I know the power of prayer, but it's amazing how much stronger you feel when you know someone is lifting up your arms like they lifted up Moses's arms in battle. It's amazing. When I know people are praying, it gives me strength to go on that next minute, the minute after that, the hour after that. So when the hard hat, it, the hard hat doesn't come out very often, but when it comes out, you know, Michelle's Mm -hmm. in a bad spot. Yeah. I I watch that closely. I identify uh, with you. Uh, My heart goes out to you. Uh, I guess as being the older woman and the the mother type, uh, I'd like to scoop you up and, and, and just hold you close to, Till the storm passes. Uh, but I'm so grateful and so thankful that the Lord saw fit uh, to walk you into my life 
uh, and to prepare me not even knowing what was going to come. Uh, and you have been such an inspiration in walking with me even after uh, the stroke. Uh, Dr. Michelle, t tell the audience, uh, some of them don't know, uh, with me having dealt with a stroke, uh, much of what you uh, help people with, uh, you deal with like people like me who have had strokes, uh, just kind of throw a, a vision out there for some of the stuff that you actually help uh, people with. A neuropsychologist, the best way I can describe it is kind of a marriage of the best parts of a neurologist, a psychiatrist, and a psychologist. So we are tr medical professionals trained to evaluate and diagnose and treat any kind of brain dysfunction. That could be ADHD or learning disabilities, could be stroke, could be head injury. Frequently, I'd get referrals from neurologists to help ascertain in the elderly, is this dementia or is this depression? It's usually a very, very long but thorough evaluation. And through that, we're evaluating all the different parts of brain functioning. So attention and memory and problem solving and motor skills and visual spatial skills, every part of the amazing brain that God gave us to figure out, okay, so what is not working so well? What's been affected? And then what do we need to do to try to maximize functioning again? Wow. That covers a lot of space. Uh, a lot of people just see one part, uh, but knowing scripture talks about the spirit, the soul, the body, the mind, the emotional will, and how they intricately work and uh, weave together. Uh, you actually uh, work with the whole literal person. Uh, I find that amazing because we can do it in sections, but it all works together. So I love, 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 absolutely love uh, how you do that. Tell me, uh, particularly as as I thought about where do we go, uh, we could go back and I could talk a lot about who you are. Uh, I would love for uh, my listeners to, to go on your site to, to see all the multiple mock multiple things that you do, uh, the books that you've written, uh, the places that you've been, the honors that even this year that you receive, um, and uh, the spaces and the places that God has taken you in such an amazing way. Uh, but I want to put on my coach's hat, and I want to take us from where we are forward, uh, particularly in the day and the time that we are living in. We are living in a world of chaos that is traumatizing young people. You're, you're seeing young people come uh, to a, a, a psychologist, a psychiatrist. Uh, the old, we are in a day of a lot of confusion. So as we walk forward as believers in a biblically balanced way, not sticking our head in the ground and saying, oh, it's not happening as the old saying goes, you get your butt shot off, uh, nor being so obsessed with what's out there that we can't get past the trauma, trauma, trauma. Uh, how do we biblically walk forward what we're seeing happening in a world around us uh, so that we can function fully and freely uh, and seeing people come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, seeing people find freedom in him to be who he called uh, them to be and to be able to uh, actually walk forward, whether we have five days left, three days left, whether we have 16 years left, we see the, uh, the living Christ manifest himself through us in such a powerful way. Now, that's a big dose, but I'll throw it out there to you. Let, it, let us have it. I think it all starts with the scripture. My people perish for mm -hmm. lack of knowledge. Yes. We have to be aware of what's going on around us, what the root of it is, and we have to be so immersed in God's word. Mm -hmm. When Jesus left this earth, he said, I have to go. But in my place, the Holy Spirit's going to come to remind you of all truth. 
well, Carolyn, the Holy Spirit cannot remind us of truth that we have not already taken responsibility to learn. The Holy Spirit cannot remind us of God's word if we have not already put God's word in our mind. So that we have a personal responsibility to be able to discern between truth and deception. And you only know God's truth by being in his word. Before we got on, you and I prayed, and I really just felt impressed that in society today, I'm hearing people talk about, well, that's my truth. No, no, no. (laughs) It's not your truth. There is one truth, and it's God's truth. Scripture says that the heart is deceptive above all things. So if you are relying on your truth to help you survive in this (laughs) world, you're being deceived. Yes. God says my people perish for lack of knowledge. And so it's important that we are so grounded in God's word and that God's word is what we hear. God's voice is what we hear over and above all the noise. I do believe Satan knows his time is short. We don't Mm. know whether that time is a day, a year, a thousand years. We don't know, but we do know that we are closer to Christ returning than we've ever been before in history. Absolutely. The question is, are you prepared for it? Mm -hmm. Because the enemy more than ever, I think, at least in my lifetime, and perhaps every generation has thought this, Carolyn, but what I'm seeing is that more than ever in my lifetime, we are seeing the enemy so division mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and Lord and deception. Yeah. And God is so very clear that we need to take every thought captive. Absolutely. And that we need to renew our minds. Mm-hmm. Renew it. It means change. It means move forward. It means grow in God's truth. And we live in a society that wants a quick fix. Mm-hmm. We talked about, I go through severe chronic pain. I would love a quick fix. But mm-hmm. you know what I have found is that that quick fix is not satisfying. Then you want more mm-hmm. of whatever, whether it's a candy bar or it's prescription medication or it's alcohol or whatever you have used as a vice. Because nothing in this world satisfies, you'll Mm -hmm. want it again and you'll want more of it to satisfy. But if we look to God to satisfy our needs, we can never run out. We have an endless supply, Mm -hmm. but God's not going to chase us down. So if you want to go off and try whatever to be your advice, but it's not God. It's not going to satisfy. And then we get to those difficult times in life and we go, but God, where are you? When I needed you most, where are you? I suspect God saying, I never moved. You Mm -hmm. did. You come back to me. Mm -hmm. Draw near to me, the scripture says, and I will draw near to you. That Mm -hmm. means it's on us to draw near to him first. And he's like, great, I've got open arms. I'm just waiting for you. And when you do, I will rush to you just like the father in the story of the prodigal child. That father had to wait for the son to start drawing near and coming back. And he welcomed him with open arms. And that's what God wants to do for us. But he's not going to force us to be in his presence. He's not going to force us to be in his word. He's not going to force us to give up those things that we think satisfy. Mm -hmm. But the enemy is just working so hard to create division in our families, in our workplaces, in schools, in our government. Division is everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never known so many pronouns in my life. Mm -hmm. That that's creating division between people. It's it's making you different than me. And if you don't honor the way I am, Mm -hmm. but my Bible says we are to honor God above all else. And I think that's key. Mm -hmm. See, that's a clarion truth. Uh, 
a clarion voice in our time. I'm so glad you walked it out uh, that way because the enemy is the great deceiver who does want to confuse the you know what out of all of us uh, to blow smoke everywhere, uh, smoking mirrors so that everything changes. Our young people don't know which way to go, what way to turn, turn uh, who they are, what they are, whatever. Uh, and the Spirit of God comes with clarity. But the enemy is at an all-time force-filled path going forward. But he is a liar. He is defeated. The Spirit of God does desire to fill us and to be our life as we move forward and to be a beacon of light. I just talked with uh, one of my clients uh, uh, before I came in, and, and this is so often a story, uh, even in the churches, the, the division uh, from left to right, I'm a Baptist, or I'm a Presbyterian, or I'm a Methodist, or I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm the other, and it's divisive, 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 and then you have your programs that have to be grander, greater, so that people will come, and you look and say, where has the Spirit of God gone? It's like almost he could sit back and say, go ahead, run the show. You'll see what happens with flesh. But when you acknowledge me and I am able to do what I am, as he is the great, uh, great I am, uh, then you will see something happen that cannot, will not happen with man. But that's where we pray for people's eyes to be open to, to be able to walk in. I find it absolutely amazing, stunning. And I think my audience will too, that a woman of such high educational credentials could believe such stuff as that when you want to say people, 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 people. The woman has wisdom from above. Walk my audience into part of your story, even as uh, where you're going now, because as a neuropsychologist, uh, you didn't have an easy path as far as um, insurance companies and other people. You, you need to dumb that down or not say that quite as much. You've got all the stuff that you and I both know, the landmines that we've had to walk through. Uh, walk my audience how that made you stronger in him, that made you trust more in him, and not in your education uh, or your credentialing or whatever people want to say about you. Walk that into my, my audience. In the mental health space, we're not allowed to bring up faith mm -hmm. unless our clients do. Mm -hmm. and so for the first half of my career, I've had to repent to the Lord because I didn't bring it up unless my clients brought it up because the rules that be told me what I could and could not do. Insurance companies tell us what we can and cannot do. And let's face it, insurance companies are there. They're a business. They're there to make money. Mm -hmm. they're, they're really not there for our, for our good as we would like to think. And so for the first half of my career, Carolyn, I didn't talk about faith until I went through a life-threatening illness and then plunged into the pit of depression. And I tried all the things that I would normally suggest to my clients that they do. Yeah. And all the things, therapy, medication, rest, exercise, nutrition, you know, all the things they helped, but they weren't enough mm -hmm. to take the depression away. And I cried out to God. And I, first of all, I cried out and I said, this is going to be my life. I'm not sure I want to go on living. Yeah. And then I cried out to him and said, look, I'm doing all the things that I would normally recommend. I cannot go back to being that doctor unless I know what I recommend will help. And there's something missing. You have to show me what's missing or I'm not going to go back to being a doctor. Yes. And it, I didn't hear the audible voice of God, but the way I describe it is like a holy whisper. Mm -hmm. and it was as if God said, Michelle. It is like you are putting a Band-Aid on an infection and hoping it gets well. Mm -hmm. You need to address the spiritual roots of disease. 
And Caroline, it was like the light bulb went off. I went, of course, I address the physical and the mental and the emotional, but the spiritual part has not been a part of my practice because I'm not allowed to. Right. That's part of the reason I'm writing books and I'm speaking because I can share God's truth without someone telling me I have broken the rules. But that changed everything for me. I went through a journey and I said, Lord, okay, I don't know what the spiritual roots of depression or anxiety is. You're going to have to show me. And he did. And that's that's what hope prevails. Insights from a doctor's personal journey is about the spiritual roots of depression. How do we get through that? And then breaking anxiety script, how to reclaim the peace God promises. How do we face that giant of worry, fear, and anxiety in a biblically based way? Yes. But that's an example of what I mean. God's truth was out there. I was letting the powers that be dictate what mm-hmm. I did. Yeah. And, and God's not, you know, going to barge through the door and say, no, you got to do it this way. It was when I went to him and said, God, will you teach me? He's like, I was just waiting for you to ask. Of course yes. I was for you. Yeah. And so now that's changed everything. It's changed how I work with people. It's changed how I parent. It's changed how I show up as a wife and a friend. Because I can't tolerate deception. It's God's way or it's no way. And that's Mm -hmm. hard. And believe me, it brings on spiritual warfare like I never knew existed. Every single book I write is fraught with major, major warfare. Every single time. Because the enemy doesn't like it. As you've as you've alluded to, I point a spotlight mm-hmm. on the enemy and yes. he hates it. So mm-hmm. he's like, well, I'm going to try to convince you not to do that anymore. Well, he doesn't know me very well because I don't give up. <laughs> I serve <laughs> the risen Lord. Yeah. Hey, he tells me to stop. I'll stop. Otherwise, as long as he gives me breath, I'm going to keep declaring his truth. Yes. Wow. wow. See, that's a clarion um voice and a lot of smoky mirrors in our day people who either have to get to the right or have to get to the left uh or those who just want to kind of ride it in the middle uh, in the days as we move forward as we're going to see clearly either revival take place uh in the world we live in uh or whether the lord comes back whatever uh, he has next on the kingdom calendar. Uh, I think there's going to be a major continual shaking up. Hello, people. Hello, hello, hello. Either face it, square on, decide, uh, are you going to allow him to be Lord in life? Or are you going to live a nominal Christianity, which you can get by down here, but when you stand in the judgment seat and it goes all goes and burns up, nothing left. When you begin to realize, but I, but I, down here, we have to make decision right here, right now. So a dividing line, the cross, I call it, is coming down straight into the world, 2023, that we live. And it is beckoning, calling waiting to see if we're going to respond. So if you could challenge uh, our audience, young all the way to the, to the older, because God uses everybody in, from one end to the other. Uh, what might be your challenge for today to embrace the world that they live in that is continually evolving and changing as they're moving forward if they're actually going to make uh, an impact uh, and have the hope-filled perspective and bring it into their world, young or old, how would you challenge them or how would you want to walk that out into their lives? You cannot have maximum eternal impact If you are not first spending time in God's word, we have to be Berean, which means we have to go back to the scriptures for ourselves. Unfortunately, Carolyn, we live in a time now 
where we we can't even trust our pastors Mm -hmm. to speak truth about real issues without us challenging what they're saying and going back to the word of God for ourselves. You cannot Mm -hmm. go to church on Sunday and be assured that your pastor is going to necessarily speak God's truth. We have pastors who are not willing to talk about real life issues that are facing our culture today. Where does God stand on those issues? I love my pastor, but I have to go back to the word to make sure that it really says what he says it says. And I have to pray and I have to ask God to reveal any areas of deception or any areas where I've inserted my feelings or my Mm -hmm. opinion into God's word. It goes back to the heart is deceptive. And I think so many of our pastors mean well, but they're dummying down the gospel. Mm -hmm. So if we want to have maximum impact, it starts with how are you starting your day? Are Mm -hmm. you willing to get up 10, 15, 30 minutes early to be in God's word? And I'm challenging myself just as I'm challenging the audience. Mm -hmm. It's a real busy time of the year. And when things get really busy, we all have 24 hours in the day, but sometimes the busier thing life gets, the more we let go of the things that we should be making the priority. So if you want to have maximum impact in your home, in your schools, in your place of business, in your career, it starts with doing it God's way. And he will bless it. It may not look like the blessing that you see others receiving, but those who are not following hard after God, they're not a threat to the enemy. So it looks like they're successful here in this earth. But what we have in this earth is not going to follow us into Mm -hmm. eternity. That's what I call the smoking mirrors. Uh, And my heart goes out to pastors uh to the missionaries to those in in ministry uh because they are faced they are faced uh the pastor i think that you had on not i think it was last week uh your listener my listener should go back even to listen to that because as a pastor of a highly successful i think three right uh churches uh big numbers uh but when uh, some stands were taken, and then when he, he could not be dumbed down from the word of God, he was pushed out. It's amazing. That's not to be critical. That's just to say this is the picture. This is the reality of where we are. People, we're in the spiritual warfare, uh, and it's against the powers of darkness, not one another. But he will turn us against each other. But if we don't stand for the truth, we don't stand for the, the light, we're going we're gonna to fall as an enemy prey, and it will show up in the judgment day. Poet, don't know it. Uh, but maybe... I've always been this way, but I particularly I get, as I get older and now specifically since I had the stroke and I didn't die and I am going to live, uh, I'm not willing to dumb down my version of anything. I can be grace-filled, gracious, but if it doesn't line up with the word of God, I can say, love you, my brother, love you, my sister. I just can't go there with you. And sometimes that means we we have to move a space. We have to move a place. Uh, and, and that's okay because we are held accountable for our lives. I can't be held accountable for yours. So if you were to challenge uh, our uh, audience, and I won't hold you much longer. If you were to challenge our audience, be it young, going all the way to the older. The older is like, no, no, don't sit down. Retirement, you may, you can retire, but God has something for you to do. Or the young saying, I don't, uh, well, I'm too young. I don't, I don't, I don't. If you were to walk in, if you had a room full of, uh, say, 10,000, well, let's dumb it down to 1,000, make it easier. Or if you want to put it down to like 100. And if it were the last message or the most important message that you could speak into their lives for the here, for the now, 
for them, looking as they move forward to what's going to be faced later on, what might that be in a think way that they can take home or or go in a quiet space and say, Lord, show me, open my eyes, speak to me, not what everybody else says, but what do you want to say to me? What would that be? I would tell them, first of all, get over yourself. Mm -hmm. That sounds harsh, mm -hmm. but I've had to speak it to myself. Yes. So yes. Go out, find someone to help. You see, you're going to the grocery store and you see a woman with a baby juggling a cart. Offer to take her cart back. I'm not saying you have to do grand magnanimous things like build orphanages. If God, but if God tells you that you better go build that orphanage, but it can be as simple as you're in your quiet time this morning reading and God brings someone to mind, text them right away. Be obedient. When God gives you those nudges, he is nudging us all the time. The question is, is it so noisy that we're ignoring his nudges? Mm -hmm. Or will we do as he's asking? Because those are the things that when we get to heaven, he's going to say, see that person over there? They didn't give up because you helped them that day. Mm -hmm. They're here because you spoke a word of encouragement. That mm -hmm. one over there, their whole family came to know the Lord because you shared it with one person. We cannot fathom how God uses the little things. But mm -hmm. God says, if you are not faithful with the small things, why would I entrust more to you? But if you are faithful with the small things, I will give you the keys to the kingdom. So get over yourself. This world is now mm -hmm. the best. It is about him. Mm -hmm. He'll find a way to serve his people. That's powerful. Now, I know you wouldn't probably want me to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Okay. So I'm warning you. Uh, and I'm going to try to do it without crying. Uh, when I did first meet you with the lady who introduced uh, me to you, and I began to listen to all your podcasts, and I thought, oh, she knows about the living Christ. She knows about more than just get saved, get saved, get saved, do, do, do all that you can. Uh, and I began to, to listen to everything. And then when I began to read your books, and then when I could not read after I had a stroke and I could listen to your books and I listen sometimes three and four times and let it go deep down in my heart. Uh, I thought to myself, here's a real woman of God, highly educated, what the world would say has it made all the credentials, as you say it, with all the letters behind your name and 30 plus years of practice, which pops, snap, crackles, and pops uh, when with humility. I never heard anything but humility when, as we would share back and forth and we would do our texting and all like that, I saw a real woman of God. And I thought, there still are people like that brought here. So that's not to put all any feathers in your hat, but I must say it pops extremely loud to me. And if my uh, the people that are listening to my podcast, my clients who I've highly recommended, if now that they've seen you, they're getting to know you, they, they can read your book, they'll see a real live human, highly educated, uh, highly functioning, uh, highly going through pain that does not stop, goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on, but yet she is willing to let the living Christ in her be all that she needs. That doesn't mean you don't cry. That doesn't mean you don't want to throw a rock through a window uh, at times. doesn't mean you just don't want to just scream, but it means that it doesn't stop you. Now, I want to tell you, Dr. Michelle, and to my audience that's listening, that pops extremely loud for me. So that is my story. I'm sticking to it, and I won't let you take it away. So how about that? 
So is there anything that you would like to just throw out there to our, our uh, my, my uh, clients? No, no, my clients, my podcast people, uh, before I let you go. And you know, we talked about some really tough issues today and we, we hit it hard, but it's because Carolyn and I feel like our time is short. We don't have time to waste and we have to get back to the most important thing. A lot of what we talked about, we didn't label it this, but we really talked about our mindset. Yes. Where is your mindset? And are you set on victory in Jesus or a victim mentality before we got on the, on the air, Carolyn and I were talking about my devotional today is going to be a good day. 90 promises from God to start your day off. Right. That came out of the worst time in my life. Mm -hmm. When I had a very negative mindset, I was very upset with God Mm -hmm. and God gave us our feelings. Yes. And I'm grateful for them, but our feelings will mislead us. Yes. So we have to rely on God's truth. So we can still have a good day despite our feelings and despite our circumstances. And Carolyn, you gave me permission to say, if you need a stocking stuffer or a gift for a teacher or a postal worker or your nail tech, today is going to be a good day. 90 Promises from God is a small little book. It fits in a stocking. Christian book now has it on sale for a dollar ninety nine. Yeah, a dollar ninety nine to give ninety days of a good, positive, biblically based mindset to start your day. We've talked about the importance of being in the Word. That little book is a good place to start. Amen. Dr. Michelle, uh, one last thing before I let you go. There, your Husband, you uh, have, uh, y'all been married how many years? It'll be 36 in about a week. Oh, my goodness. And you have two boys. And uh, they're both adults. And and now you have a daughter-in-law. I I watch, I follow you uh, all the way. You are a woman uh, of family, of great love. Uh, You're in the church. You're very connective and all like that. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for my audience. Thank you uh, for me. Uh, as people uh, reading your books, uh, we will try to get it on with Chad. Uh, I'll have him put it on my uh, uh, Facebook uh, to be able to put out there all the books that you do have where they, they can find. Uh, but if you could just give me one general uh, thing uh, of where they could go to maybe get, get a whole list of them, where would that be? The easiest place is to go to Dr. Michelle B. Dot com. Nobody spells or pronounces my last name right. So we created a shortcut. It's just Dr. Michelle B. Dot com. There you'll find 15 years of blog posts, last five years of all the podcast episodes, all the books, all the links to find me on social media. Because again, nobody spells my name right. So you just click a button and you'll go right there. And and if you follow me from this conversation with Carolyn, let us know. We'd like to know that that's, I love hearing how God connects the dots. We started this chat with Carolyn saying, I was introduced to her through somebody who said, you have to, you have to listen to her podcast. We love to see how God works behind the scenes. So let us know you found, you found us through this conversation. Absolutely. It's amazing the way that God, God just threads it together. It's just, it's amazing. Uh, the story that keeps on giving. I'm so grateful. I want to thank you uh, and my audience uh, for listening, for you, for speaking and sharing your heart with us. Could I just ask you just to even have a word of prayer over all the audience that will be watching, not only now, but from days to come, because I do believe that this is a gift that will keep giving. Could you just pray for the audience, please? It would be my joy. Father God, I just love how you created all things and you are above all things and you know all things. You knew that we would have this conversation today before Carolyn and I even met. And you know who's going to listen and watch this conversation. Would you just prepare their hearts to hear from you and let anything that is not of you fall away? Carolyn and I don't want them to hear us. 
Yeah. Your voice is the only voice that matters. Lord, would mm-hmm. you let them know that you see them in their pain, that you hear them, that nothing they are going through is taking you by surprise. And you promised mm-hmm. in your word in Isaiah that you will see them through it. Where they are now is not their final destiny, mm-hmm. but encourage them, Lord, to reach out to the hem of your garment, to walk mm-hmm. hand in hand with you because it's the safest place to be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to thank my audience for watching. Uh, this is Carolyn Freeman from Impact Coaching Ministry. I'm the president uh, and whatever you want to call me uh, from there. But I, I do want to thank again Dr. Bankston for taking her time uh, to be with us today. Thank you so much, Dr. Michelle. It's been my joy, Carolyn. We'll do it again sometime.